Hello everyone, welcome back to another video, and today we are finally, finally talking about my man, Aquaman, and the Lost Kingdom. Yeah, this is an extremely light review because I've been extremely busy. It came out at Christmas time, so I was extremely busy, so I didn't get to see it right away like I was hoping. But I eventually saw it, and I wanted to get a review out just because, I mean, I reviewed almost every Marvel DC movie of 2023 except this one so i mean i had to get in a review out right so yeah it, and this is the last dc eu movie which is crazy and also kind of sad i'm really sad that the dc eu sadly is ending with aquaman 2 instead of justice league end game I, I just stole that title from avengers because i don't know what a justice league movie would be to finish off this franchise so yeah, that's kind of sad, especially because you could this has it is 100% a standalone Aquaman movie. There's there's very 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 little connections to any d uh, outside world DC stuff, and <laughs> so obviously this is nowhere. This is not at all a finale to the DC EU because it wasn't supposed to be. It was supposed to be part two in in the Aquaman story, probably a trilogy, honestly. And that's also really sad that there's so many movies I feel like should have gotten trilogies. Aquaman got two movies. I wish we could have capped it off with a third film to end the trilogy. Shazam got two movies. I wish we could have had a third film to cap off that story. Wonder Woman had two movies, despite the fact that the second one was not very good. I still would have liked at least a third film to end that trilogy. And I mean, the fact that Man of Steel doesn't have a, it doesn't even have a second movie, let alone a trilogy, is messed up. Shoot, and the fact that Batman, that Ben Affleck's Batman doesn't even have a movie, a first solo movie, just, just not even talk about a trilogy is also messed up. But you know, we should have had a Batman, Superman, Aquaman, Wonder Woman, and even Flash trilogy by now, along with a Justice League trilogy. But you know, that's not how things work because WB doesn't know how to do things or at least they didn't no, new management now maybe they'll, they'll probably do better with the new DCU coming out but I guess we'll have to wait and see now stop t stop talking about the DCU and the DCU and finally talk about Aquaman in the Lost Kingdom let's talk about my man Aquaman so this is a movie that I, another movie that I think it's going to be very 50 50 with people <coughs> Because I personally think the movie is a lot of fun. I, I enjoyed it. I, I, I enjoyed it. I thought it was fun. I, I enjoyed being back in this world with these characters. With my man, Aquaman. How many times am I going to say my man? As many times as possible. Especially if this is the last time. Seeing Jason Momoa back as Aquaman is awesome. It is um, kind of weird because this is very much a sequel to the first Aquaman movie, which I like. It does, I think it does a great job at expanding the story, expanding the character arcs, expanding the lore, expanding the world. I think it does a great job with all that. I, I think some of the visuals in this movie were really cool. Now, there were some parts in the movie that were kind of like, oof, that's kind of iffy. But for the most part, I think the visuals in this movie were pretty cool. There were, there were a bunch of cool shots in this movie. Black Manta suit, I just want to point out, was awesome. I mean, it was awesome with the first film, but, uh, dude, Black Manta just has such a cool design in these movies. I think they did a great job with him. Speaking of the character arcs, I think that Orm's character arc was great. I, I love how he was redeemed in this movie. I, th I think he has a great, fun relationship with Aquaman in this movie. That, that was fun. Uh, speaking of the characters, once again, Randall Park's character, even though I don't remember his name, I really enjoyed him. It's probably because I really enjoy Randall Park, and I can't stop thinking about him as Jimmy Woo. But I, I like that his, I love his character. Now there were some, there were some very cheesy things in this movie, some cliches that people that there are going to be some people who are like, "Wow, that was stupid." But I liked it. I had fun. I, I, I thought it was fun and funny. I had fun with it. I enjoyed it. So yeah, there are some things in this movie that were, were cheesy. So some people might might not like it, but I liked it. So. That's all that matters, right? Not really, but you know, I can say whatever I want. Once again, this isn't a perfect movie. Even even I was able to find some, <laughs> some flaws with it. Like for example, there's some, there's some exposition in this movie that it's just just like feels like it's shoved in there. Like the fact that the some of these characters know this exposition, the way they the way they know the exposition and the way they explain it just feels so forced, like and kind of lazy. Like oh. I mean, this. I guess this might be mild spoilers, but not really, because it's extremely out of content, context. But a character touches an item, and then he gets, he learns all this exposition, and then he explains it to everybody. 
that would that to me that's just like such an extremely lazy way to give the audience exposition like that it was just so obviously shoved in there so they could get the exposition across also there were like a there are a ton of flashbacks in this movie that i just find kind of funny it's like you you practically could have done it previously on that that's, there's just a lot there that didn't probably need to be there and to be completely honest with you i thought the third act i thought was fun I don't know. I, I have very mixed feelings on the third act that I might dive into a bit later, wh where I'll dive into some uh, spoilers. But I'll say that till the end. So if you don't want anything and you haven't seen this movie yet, you can, you you can click off. But yeah. So th like I said, this is a movie that was fun. I, there were jokes. There were some jokes that I laughed at that were funny, but there were some jokes that just didn't land for me. I like that Aquaman has a kid too in this movie because I feel like we very rarely get to have characters with. <laughs> superheroes with their kids nowadays they never let peter parker have a kid until across the spider-verse thank goodness thank you across the spider-verse something i always wanted batman for, uh, nowadays is never allowed to have a robin which is just so f annoying My, like come on just let batman have a robin for crying out loud i mean rumors are that robin might be in the batman and we're finally finding finally getting the bat family in the brave and the bold but still superheroes are never allowed to have kids for some reason so the fact that they actually let alchemy have a kid was awesome even though it does feel kind of weird that in his second movie takes place so many years after the first that he, he was able to have a kid and stuff, but you know, whatever. I mean, now I'm thinking about it, it has been five years since the first movie. Wow. Wow. Just wow. <laughs> I remember seeing the first film in theaters and I really enjoying it, so I just can't believe it's been five years. Five years with no sequel. How is that possible? Yeah. So, the question is, should you see this movie in theaters? Well... You probably have seen this movie in theaters already because of how late this review is. But because I just never review, I gotta ask. Should you see this movie in the theaters? That is really hard to explain. If you like the first Aquaman movie, then yes. If you, if you like the first Aquaman movie and or you are a DC fan, yes. Go see this in the theater. I mean, come on. If you saw Man of Steel in the theater, you might as well see the, any of the DCEU in the theater, right? Plus, I think that I've, I've heard a lot of people say that if you like the first Aquaman, you're gonna like this one. I 100% agree. I, I, although it's not as good as the first film... I still think you would enjoy it if you enjoyed the first film, so yeah. So, so in short, if you like the Aquaman 1 and you're a DC fan, go see it in theaters. If not, you can wait till streaming. But yeah, so that's pretty much all I have to say about without spoilers. I'm not sure if I really want to do a spoiler review just because I don't have too much to say about it. But I did want to briefly go over what my mixed feelings were about the ending. So, mild spoiler alert. So if you haven't seen the movie, you, you can click away. Come back after... Now let's dive into some mild spoilers. So here's the here's my problem with the third act. There was some fun in it. The action was really cool. But my problem with the third act is that it feels like two different third acts in one third act. It feels like these the, the third act could have been split into two different third acts for a second and third film, but it was combined in one. We had one third act, which was Aquaman versus Black Manta. Finally, this vengeful fight where Black Manta just desperately wants to kill Aquaman and take revenge. A very personal fight w that ends with Black Manta about to fall to his death. Aquaman willing to do the right thing and right the wrong he made five years ago. Well, I'm not sure if it was actually five years ago, but five years ago was when the first Aquaman movie came out. By offering to save Black Manta, Black Manta refusing letting himself die. That's third act number one also shoved into that is third act number two which is this dark i'm not and i don't i'll be completely honest with you i don't remember what his name is the i'm mean, you're gonna call him the dark king he's the ghost guy who owns the possessed trident if you've seen the movie you know what i'm talking about third act number two was the dark king or whoever he is versus aquaman with high stakes if this guy comes back to life he's going to he's going to probably take try to take over the world people are gonna die it's gonna be it's gonna be horrible it's Aquaman versus a supernatural force with with a battle where him and his brother are trying to fight the corruption of the Trident ending with the with them fighting the corruption working together as brothers and taking down this dark force two different third acts and they shove it into one now like I said I think those are two great third acts on their own like I I think I like the idea of Black Manta about to die Aquaman's like Try, gonna right the wrong by trying offering to save him but black man's refusing and i also like the idea of 
Orm and Aquaman both have their hands on the Trident and trying to fight the corruption of the Trident to stop this dark force. However, it feels it feels unnecessary to have them both in third act. It feels like movie number two should have been Aquaman versus Black Manta, and then they should have made. Then we should have had a third film, which was all about the Lost Kingdom, this dark force that's out there with. The, letting that dark force, because I forget the name, I'm just calling it that, come back to life and have a huge third act where it's Aquaman versus that guy because that could be an epic finale with world-ending stakes and, it, but, and continuing his relationship with his brother. But but obviously, even if they were planning to do that, they couldn't have done that because no, Aquaman 3 is happening. So they have. So obviously, even if they were to, to have this movie be only the Black Manta third act, we would never see the other third act, so I mean, I guess, I guess it's better than not than nothing. But that's my problem with the third act: is it's two third acts put together. They should have been two different third acts for two different movies. I know that's not gonna happen, but that's that's my feelings on the third act. I don't hate it, but it feels very much like two third acts squished into one. So yeah, that that's pretty much my main. That's pretty much what I wanted to talk about with spoilers mainly. My mixed feelings on the third act, but yeah. Oh, also, in case you're wondering, there is a mid credit scene. There is no end credit scene, but you don't need to stay for it if you don't want to. It's just a joke. <laughs> it's just a joke. Obviously, it's not going to set anything up. Well, it is kind of funny. There was originally going to be the, the end credit scene for this movie kept changing. First, there was going to be Aquaman interacting with uh, Michael Keaton's Batman. Then movies, the movie slate was was switched down, so they cut it. And they record, they filmed a, a scene with Aquaman with Ben Affleck's Batman, and then movies got switched around, and they cut it. There were rumors that they had a scene with, they had both scenes, and then we found out that Aquaman 2 was going to be the final movie, so they cut both scenes. So, now it's just one mid credit scene that is a joke. And there's, there's no need to stay around for it, unless you want to. I did. But yeah. Thank you so much for taking time to watch this video. If you like this video, please hit like. If you want to see more videos like this, please start hitting the subscribe button. Hit the notification bell so you know when I post and go live. 2023 is almost coming. Hopefully, I'll be able to keep a more a better schedule because I feel way behind in December. I do want to do a bunch of video. I do want to do some videos like I want to do the Marvel DC movies of 2023 ranked. I also want to rank the 2024 Marvel DC movies by excitement. Maybe are there actually? I forgot. Are there even any Marvel DC movies coming out? There's Deadpool three. Oh, well, I mean, there's Deadpool three, the three Sony films, and Joker two. But you know, I don't know. We'll see. We'll see what the future holds. Thanks for watching once again. I hope to see you guys in the next video. Bye.